a United 757 plane loses its landing gear. Check it out. We turn now to the harrowing moments for passengers on board a United flight leaving Los Angeles, the Boeing 757 losing one of its main landing gear tires. In fact, passengers were told to brace. Here's Mola Lenghi. On the heels of a record-setting weekend for air travel, tonight the FAA and United Airlines are launching an investigation after one of its passenger planes lost a tire during takeoff. They believe it was the left side uh, aft in the main landing gear tire that fell off. The incident occurring this morning while the Denver-bound Boeing 757, packed with 181 passengers and crew, was leaving Los Angeles. Video from inside the cabin showing the harrowing moments, the plane successfully landing hours later. You can hear the crew telling passengers to brace. Brace, brace, brace. Back in March, a rear tire of another United flight falling off moments after takeoff. It literally just happened. The wheel landing in a parking lot, slamming into several cars and damaging a fence. Well, David, United has been under extensive supervision by the FAA after a series of maintenance issues throughout this year. Meanwhile, tonight, that 29-year-old plane involved in this latest incident, that remains grounded, David. At some point also, because I know that Boeing, listen, Boeing is the easy, easy out in this. It's easy to hold Boeing accountable for the 757 and the landing gear and all of this stuff, especially since... You know, we've seen the crisis and the safety issues as far as what was happening and them apologizing and all of that. But here's my question also. Is Boeing the easy target for a lack of safety checks or a lack of maintenance? Because, for example, I can go and purchase a car. And I'm not saying that it's not their fault, but I, am, I do want to just ask the question, right? I'm not saying that it's, it's not their fault or it is their fault. But let's just say, for example, I go out and I buy a car. Let's say I buy, I don't know, a Toyota Camry. Oh, let's use a good one. A Nissan Altima, the baby mama special. Let's say that I buy the, the, the baby mama special, a Nissan Altima, right? And I don't change the oil or I never get the tires, you know, changed and rotated. And I'm riding on slicks. Now, anybody knows <laughs> what slicks are. Slicks is a racing reference. But I'm riding on slick, so I'm in the snow, and then I hit a turn, and then I start spinning out of control. Does it then become uh, Nissan's fault, or is it my fault for not properly maintaining the vehicle that I purchased? Just asking a question, because, again, it's easy to just spin this off on, and we always know that where there's smoke, there's fire. However, is there some culpability on the actual airlines to maintain their aircraft correctly? Or is it 100% Boeing's fault? Or is it a little bit of both? I don't know. You guys tell me. In addition to that, I want to spin over real quick. Uh, be careful, ladies. Be very, very careful. Because there are women that are getting found, uh, stuffed, and taken out in sleeping bags. Check it out. New tonight, the search for suspects after a woman's body was found inside a trash bag in Kipps Bay. Friends and family spoke to CBS 2's Alice Gaynor, remembering her life taken too soon. Oh, my beautiful baby, my angel. Family and friends gathered at a memorial on 27th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenues where the body of 31-year-old Yasmeen Williams was found. Police say this past Friday, just before 5 p.m., they responded to a call of a suspicious package on the curb. Police sources say inside... That looked crazy. Let me, let me just say that right now. That looked insane. We, are, we as humans have always been savages. Like, this is nothing new. We as humans have always, and when I say always, I mean always been savages. Since the beginning of time, we do some of the worst things to each other, to our family, to our children, to ourselves. We have always been savages. But I will never, ever, ever get used to witnessing and seeing and observing some of the stuff that I see on the news, and I'm just not going to be desensitized to it. That's insane for somebody to be rolled up inside of a bag like that. Inside the trash bag was a woman's body wrapped in a sleeping bag. The medical examiner's office ruled it a homicide. She had been shot in the head. No one would have a reason to hurt her like that. Everyone she knew, she, she meant something to them. 
Police sources say a man was seen on video pulling the bag on a motorized wheelchair. Several say Williams was friends with a man who uses a wheelchair in the neighborhood. She grew up here and lived nearby. Williams' mother says days before she was killed, her daughter, known as Yazzie, had just started a new job. She was looking so forward to living, living her life. Because she got her degree in criminal yeah. justice. She went to Buffalo State University, yeah. and she wanted to go back to be a lawyer. You could always catch her on a city bike. She had a beautiful voice. She just really loved life. Williams had a twin brother and a little sister. She used to always take good care of me. And she used to always be proud of me. She was the best sister I could ever have. And I love her so much. I just wish she could have stayed a little longer because I just wanted to grow up with her. So far, no arrest, no motive, and police sources say right now it's unclear where the murder took place. The longer it stays unaddressed or unsolved, the longer people are going to, you know, it adds to people's anxieties. She was a beautiful, black, educated, strong woman, and she will never be forgotten. Yo, listen, listen, listen. Family members, when y'all are grieving and y'all going through something, don't jump on the news. Don't jump on the news. Don't put y'all kids on the news. I used to watch uh, The First 48, and I thought that it was an incredibly entertaining show. I will stay up to date on this to keep you guys informed on whether or not they catch the person that shot her in the head and then wrapped her up inside of a sleeping bag and then dumped her on the side of the road. Thank you, Organized Truth. Definitely going to be reading that Super Chat shortly. And then last but not least, uh, over in Seattle, yeah, the culture is over in Sh Seattle too. You're never going to catch a shortage of women with tickets on their cars, wearing booty shorts, probably coming from brunch, getting mad at somebody that cut them off in traffic and dragging people out into the street and molly whopping them. You never, I, I believe that women are more vicious than men. Check it out. See for yourself. Both girls um, dragged me out of my truck and started beating me. They were just punching on her and holding her down on the asphalt. A broad daylight. Do y'all not realize that people are now carrying guns almost everywhere now? Like, it's very hard to get into it with somebody and not to assume that they strapped. That's what I think. You know, a lot of people be like, oh, man, you know, if somebody will get into it with me like me, I knuckle up. If you ever go to a gun class and you actually did the class and you get your CPL, your concealed pistols license or, you know, the concealed carry or whatever like that, they will tell you that because you are now armed to defend yourself, if something was to ever pop off, that is the last resort. As a matter of fact, they're so adamant about it, they say that if anything was to happen, you need to run. And you're not running because you're scared of what could happen to you. You're running because the last line of defense is for me to have to pull it out because if I pull it out, then I got to take your life. You can't pull out, <laughs> that sounds crazy. You can't pull out and then hesitate to use. You have to be 1,000% sure and really focus when you get into a situation. So if I walk away or if somebody is walk away, walking away, it's only for one of two reasons. A, either I'm protecting you from yourself or B, I also don't want the possibility of if you have something and then we get into a knuckle up because I can't control how you feel or whether or not you feel threatened. And then it could be a form of self-defense. If you start losing or if I start losing, it just becomes a, a bad situation. When everybody can go home and when people keep their hands to themselves, we don't have these type of problems inside of society. But it only take one person to go off the hinges and next thing you know, somebody getting dragged outside of their car. Speeding for a pointless reason. It happened Saturday afternoon in West Seattle. I spoke to the victim over the phone. She doesn't want to use her name because she's terrified. She was in town from Yakima to visit her father. Look at the culprits. Look at the culprits. You see them? They have no problem. Women are literally like little monsters, or in this case, big monsters. They have no problem having their booty shorts out, dragging you out the car, and then they're going to go and make a TikTok and say how men are now not masculine enough and they're not, they not going on no coffee dates. After they get done dragging you out your car, they're going to go on TikTok and make a video 
and say, I ain't never going on no coffee dates. I don't know what kind of me and these are. Well, you used to dragging dudes outside of their car and beating them up in the middle of traffic in Seattle. Who's dealing with a brain injury after having three tumors removed. The victim tells me this was all because she accidentally cut off the suspects at the intersection. The thing about white people is they always going to get your license plate number. That's what, They could get done just, just getting their butts kicked. But they're going to definitely get the evidence because they're going to get you back later. Right on top of me, and I was really scared I was going to get run over by my own vehicle. The video shows the victim's car rolled down the street where it crashed into another car. Then the suspects speed off. But witnesses say they did not go far. Someone on scene sent me this video of the Range Rover parked by Alki. You can see... It is missing the front license plate and still has a piece of paper in the windshield, like the car in the assault video. It's disheartening that, that Seattle police didn't show up in a timely manner. We could have. Well, no, they're not going to show up. It's designed over in Seattle for the criminals to be able to do what they want to do when they want to do it. Got those girls. They were, they were a mile away on the beach partying. You responded faster than. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So the girls dragged you out of your car, assaulted you, basically caught a felony, and then went, left the ticket, went and parked on the beach, and then they, these chicks went and had a good time, and they went to brunch afterwards. So let me get a round of applause for the, for the, for the queens, for the thug queens that's out here in these streets. They beat you up, and then they went to the beach, and then they went and, got, and went and started partying. Wow. And they did, and it's, that was on Saturday. It's now Monday. I'm shocked. Wendy Carrington is one of the Good Samaritans who tried to stop the assault. These look like the folks. Oh, yeah. They had the parking ticket on the front of their Land Rover. I have pictures of both suspects. That, Carrington confirmed. Pictures that the 22-year-old victim herself took after the assault. But Seattle police will not say if these are the suspects or not. They tell me they're still investigating. So we can't show them. The victim tells me Seattle police's response is making the entire incident that much more difficult to deal with. Nobody is contacting me. Nobody is reaching out. Nobody is wanting to find these girls except for me. And it's sad that this is the state of our city. This is what y'all voted for. This is what you voted for. Y'all wanted for this to be how you wanted it. You wanted to defund the police. You wanted to allow for people to be able to do stuff to you and that you have your own social workers to come out and show up to the location where you just got molly whopped. Y'all wanted this. You wanted light laws on criminals. You wanted them to be able to beat you up. You wanted them to be able to go into stores and steal anything under $950. Even if they did get caught, they're not going to be able to get prosecuted anyway because they're just going to get a plea deal and get good behavior. And if you stay out of trouble for the next six months, then we'll drop everything and you won't even have anything on your record whatsoever. We'll expunge everything. This is, I believe that every person that is in these cities need to stay where they are and deal with the consequences and either change the laws and, and, and keep on telling me on these panels that y'all don't need to vote, but don't move to the places that they already solving for a lot of these issues inside of their communities. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your quick hits.